let's get into some uh, some listener questions here that we've got uh, submitted via Instagram. Um, let's see if Matt can pull these on the screen. First one up from JFave15. Who would play you in the movie version of your life? Uh, well, everyone says I look like Steve Nash, so maybe he could like step in and like actually become an actor now that he's sort of pretty famous. I don't know. Sure, I'd love to say Ryan Gosling, but like I don't have. That's always my joke when I go to the hairdresser. Oh, can you make me look like that guy? <laughs> I like it. I I can see Steve Nash like first first like movie cameo. All right, next one up. Tom Voorhees asked personal best for. Washtenaw Dairy Donuts consumed post-workout. Uh, in college, I had a terrible diet, and I once I had one, I'd might. There's times I might have had six. Um, but my wow. personal best is when I stick to just enjoying one. Like it's good to have like a healthy amount of like eat dessert every day, but just don't don't overdo it, right? Or don't underdo it either. Like have one. That's that's perfect. Who eats the most? I think most people just have one like my son probably has see my three-year-old Darcy he the way he eats donuts is from the top and he just eats like the icing layer and maybe a little bit of indent below it so he might go through three of those but not actually eat the body of the donut next up fresh Fred asks what's the total sub four miles do you have this offhand like I thought it was more than this. I thought it was like 56 or 57, but I saw that the New Zealand Federation posted that I have 50 right now. So perhaps that's what it is. I guess it depends on whether they count certain types of races. Maybe they're not counting like oversized tracks or something. I don't know. Yeah. We'll have an intern. Do you like, think there's a chance? And look and do you, do you think there's do a I chance think, that we'd ever see a world record on an oversized indoor track or like a BU track? Is there any world or is it definitively like, no, Monaco's way faster? I think it's the time of the year is the main like hold back. Like if you actually got Jakob Ingebrigtsen onto BU in July or August and had him try and run a 3K, like that'd get pretty darn close to that 720. That's probably the only chance that could happen. Stuart McSwain on that track, like he's so light, maybe Jakob's a little big to benefit from indoor track training, from indoor track stuff. Let's see what we got here. Megan Macomi <laughs> says, what does the future for the very nice track club women's team look like? Great, great question. We're really excited about this. Um, my wife now has five women in her squad, and um, I have it's sort of my pet project and my hobby. I go on TFRRS every day and like trying to like scout the untapped talent. And so I, I have no plans on ever really being a coach, but I I like to call myself the recruiter for the club. So yeah, we're we're very open to it. Looking any which way. Um, so yeah that that's the athletes will determine what it will end up looking like chris day picks asks key pre-race indicator workout is it different now than it was 20 years ago yeah i um i probably was more confident in the past in my ability that i could like race no matter what sort of training i did so I remember I would just like when Nate Brandon would be when we would be told to do 10 400s and 58 or whatever on a Monday workout before a race on Saturday. I said, Oh, I don't need to do that. I need to save my legs. I'm just going to jog 66s. And so I didn't need to prove to myself at all because I always knew I was fit and confident. I was young and cocky, right? Whereas now, as, as I got an older, I become a lot more like doubtful in my abilities and i need some sort of indicator i'll do it in a way that is like a safe way that it's not gonna i have a negative effect on my race but um i think if i can run a controlled 800 and like 155 as part of a workout then i know that i'm going to be able to go through that split or a little bit slower in a race and and not be tying up next one up annalise crow asks who is your biggest role model and who's the your favorite rising star i guess for this one not named hobbs kessler no hobbs <laughs> yeah the role model thing is is really hard i don't think i like 
look up to any like famous people as role models um i have a lot of different people in my life or people that i like use as like guides people that are just really wise people that i trust um to help me make life decisions um mentors and my older brother and my dad and my mother-in-law andrea is someone who i like really look out to for for wise decisions and and my wife ultimately sierra she's like the Brownie wisest point. person I, yeah <laughs> seriously who, who would have been um, the pro athlete that you looked up to when you were young running specific because i know you're gonna pick like michael jordan or something well no i i'll say like at the 2000 olympics i was 17 and i was watching the 1500 meter final like, i cried when el Gourouge lost i he was my hero and i couldn't believe that this guy lost the race like that was really hard for me at the time um but like yeah it was it was really cool to have kevin sullivan and tim bro as mentors through my career guys that had been there at the top level to like help guide me and hold my hand all the way through and when i was a freshman at michigan like i looked up to nate brandon like he was god right nick jr huddles asks if you could race yourself in any previous mile which would it be and why it was the 2011 i believe boston indoor games um for some reason i had this crazy idea that i was just going to front run it and the christian hash who later got popped for doping only made it 500 meters rabbiting and i was stuck out there forever and i got steamrolled um on the last lap and I wish I could have been the guy doing that to myself. Russell Brown and Garrett Heath just destroyed me on the last 200. <clears throat> so Ryan is asking this, but I'm actually going to piggyback because I really want to know the answer as well. Tips on working, training, and keeping up with your children. I think the key for me that on the weeks that it really works and the, the days that really works in terms of like working and children is like, I will do like 50 minutes of hard work and then I'll do five minutes outside on the trampoline with them. I'm lucky that my kids are home. We homeschool. It actually helps me get more work done and I'm more productive in work because I have a, like a refresher. Um, and from a training perspective, having different times of the day that you train each day. So like have some days where you train in the late afternoon and some days train first thing in the morning, only once a day, of course. Um, and that allows you to have flexibility for your schedule for setting meetings and stuff as well. So it's only, only really two days a week. I like running in the morning. And if I set my training afternoon, I'm actually like finally looking forward to doing it. Cause I'm just sick of being on the computer all day. I hear that. All right. I have one question that just popped up in my head. So we watched Sarah Vaughn, who's a career 1500 runner, go and run 226 at CIM. Oh, so good. What, what, at your very best at a previous point in your career, what could you have run for a marathon? Or if you specifically did it now, what could you run? You don't have to do it. You can just say whatever and yeah, no yeah. one will ever have to. I always otherwise. thought like, I always used to think like, it wouldn't be worth my while unless I could run five minute miles, like two eleven point. I always thought it was like that was like the benchmark, like don't even like consider doing the marathon unless you think that's a possibility. But I never really thought like I could do that. I thought I'd probably try and do that and then blow up to like a two thirteen or two fourteen. But like with the new shoe technology, maybe that would be possible. I don't know. Um but yeah I don't at the moment I have no desire to like be in that state of fatigue and tiredness in the in the months of training. It's the like making my kids have to like sacrifice playtime and training all the time. That's something I'm not willing to do. I'm happy to do 55 miles a week is, is good. Last one for me before we let you go is you get to pick four other people for like your dream mile field. You're in your peak prime shape. You get four other people entered in this race who are those four people that you're racing and then i guess like who who wins that race i'd go john walker peter snell and probably alan webb um 
because Alan and I are the same era, right? We were always like, who's like, who's the best out of the two? Like right from the beginning, we're the same age, but we never, all of our best years, we never lined up properly. So it would have been cool at Alan and I at peak together to race each other. And I would have loved to have like, seen how me and peter and john would have matched up like who would have been the fastest or the best new zealand miler if we'd actually had to race um we all have different um claims to that for different reasons um and it would have been fun because we all would have sat on alan because he would have got impatient and had to front run it <laughs> you you get one more so do you fill that with like co or ovet or uh el garouge um, McCluffy and then kick his butt down the home street. <laughs> uh, and what track? What track are we putting you guys on? No, I would say let's say it would have been cool to race Roger Bannister. Yeah, he, he, he'd yeah, be. I don't think it'd be much of a race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, if you had given Roger a chance to like to be on our tracks with a little bit more knowledge about training, like his talent is unbelievable. If he was at the midnight mile, then that would be a good yeah. race. Yeah, that would, that's right.